let's check out some checks. Being yeeted out of windows, or more accurately, defenestrated. In the land of Czechia, then called Bohemia, there was a rabble rouser named John of Hus. Hus basically was doing what Martin Luther would later do, before it was cool, in that he told the Catholic Church they could eat a bag of dicks and preached in gasp, not Latin. So of course, the Catholic Church put him on trial and gave him two options, repent or get burned at the stake. Hus said he would repent, as long as the church could back up their claims with scripture. Uh. So, after his death, the Hussites were pissed. In the city of Prague, preacher Hans Zalewski took up the torch and marched its followers in a peaceful protest through the city. That is until, well... Yeah, someone in town hall threw a rock out the window and hit Zalewski in the head, which kind of set the Hussites off. The mob broke into town hall. And, well, after that, rocks were not the only things being thrown out of the window of town hall. After learning that all the city's councillors had been defenestrated, the king of Bohemia decided to join them by dying of a heart attack after he heard the news. This all started the Hussite Wars. Fast forward to 1483 for Defenestration 1.5, which feels like it should be called the second, but Wikipedia tells me it's not, so okay. Anyhow, there was this group called the Party of Communion under both kinds, who thought that for a proper communion, you had to have both wine and bread, not just bread with wine. I guess this hot take was too spicy for the Catholics, which caused them to come into conflict once again. So of course, the Catholics broke into town hall and yeeted the town councillors out the window. Okay, fast forward two centuries for the second defenestration, where once again, religious conflict in Bohemia was flaring up as hard as the DMs of a 14-year-old girl who joined her first Discord server. In 1555, a principle called, uh... Cuius Regio, Eius Religio, was established in the Holy Roman Empire, basically meaning the princes of the empire were free to be as Protestant or Catholic as they pleased. Now, Bohemia had been ruled by every EU4 player's favorite dynasty, the Habsburgs, since 1526, who were Catholic, which didn't bode well with the largely Protestant population of Bohemia. But King Matthias was chillin' and issued the Letter of Majesty, which basically said the Protestants were okay to do whatever they wanted. And, of course, just like your 666 EU4 ruler, he died without an heir. But that was fine because his cousin, Ferdinand of Styria, was waiting in the wings and took up the crown of Bohemia. Problem was, Ferdinand was pretty fervently Catholic, and took a look at the letter of majesty and said no. And then he told the Protestants, no more building churches. Yeah, that did not go over very well. So, all the Protestant lords, who were a part of an assembly that had been dissolved by the king, decided to meet up to figure out what to do next. And I guess King Ferdinand accidentally hit Sandal, so the Protestant lords got a hold of a letter that was supposed to go to just Catholic officials that the Protestants' lives were forfeit. Well, this made it awkward for the four Catholic lords who were supposed to meet with them. Count Thurn, who was leading the Protestants, asked them what the hell was going on. And the Catholics kinda just avoided answering anything, saying they needed to clarify with their superiors. Because what part of kill all Protestants is not clear. Thurn, realizing that two of them did not have anything to do with it, let them go. But the other two guys, yeah, guilty. In fact, they even proudly admitted to being guilty, and said they would take any punishment given to them. After all, if they got sent to jail, it's not like King Ferdinand wouldn't rescue them. Well... <coughs> But actually, they survived. Now, they claimed it was angels that rescued them, but the Protestants say they landed in a literal pile of shit, and I'm no expert here, but I'm gonna believe the Protestants. And at least for Philip Fabricius, he got the awesome sounding title of Baron of Highfall from the Emperor later on. It wouldn't be until 1948 that we would get the third, but really fourth, defenestration. This dude named Jan Maersk was the Czech ambassador to Britain until, well, the shit of town here is mine. But thankfully, he was in Britain and was made foreign minister of the Czech government in exile. When the Soviets liberated, well, more accurately, put Czechoslovakia under new management, Jan Maersk was allowed to return as one of the only non communist members of the government, and after a full on communist coup, was reduced to the only non communist in government. Now, we do not know the full story here, but it is likely on the night of March 9th, 1948, the KGB paid him a visit and, well. <coughs> Thanks to patrons Andy Luke, Emerson Salmario Rubio, Link the Bets 24, Skylar Weston, Chez Cookies, Sean Fenerty Loins, and Zyma. 